rebuilding. A catastrophic failure, a new start. Physically, mentally, our careers, our businesses. Step back, first step, next step. The driver in me just wants to get it done tomorrow. We'll do this, do that, let's move this, where are we at with this? You build some confidence, build some self-esteem, start to feel better about yourself. The Silverback Blueprint Podcast, a show for men over 40. We focus on getting stronger, staying motivated, building discipline, creating a community, and becoming truly happy. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 124 of the Silverback Blueprint Podcast, Daydream. Dramatic pause, daydream. (laughs) You know, in the last podcast, I was talking about how not every day is going to be a rainbow. Um, That was episode 123, which comes just before 124. And how we can get caught up in that negative mindset and how we need to break free. And I, I spoke just, you know, some of the things that trigger me, what are important to me, and and those kind of things. So it's a good episode to go back and kind of figure out sometimes how my mind works and some of the things that I deal with overall. Um, but in breaking free and changing our state, Anthony Robbins talks about this all the time. If you do anything or if you, if you read anything about Anthony Robbins or if you haven't, some good shit there. It's all about a peak state achieving the state you want to be in and putting yourself recognize when you're not in it and put yourself into that state we do that with physical activity nutrition uh exercise all those things but mentally what we have to do to put ourselves in that state and one of the things one of the tactics i like to use is uh, called visualization and i use that in my my morning journaling and stuff and it's another word for daydreaming but for me visualization is daydreaming with intent right? With a purpose rather than just sit there and just look up in the sky and go, Oh, that cloud looks like a horse, right? That kind of thing. And that's all right. If you want to relax and stuff, but that's not the type of daydreaming I'm talking about. I'm talking about a visualization with intent, visualizing, visualizing things that you want to do and that you want to achieve or things that are important to you. Um, you know, and, and one of my favorite tools to use for it, believe it or not, is Google, Google it, right? Um, because what I like about it is that you can just go to that search bar and just type in a word, a phrase. So whatever you're into. So if you're into cars, go to Google and type in race cars, antique cars, muscle cars. I'm not into any of that shit. I'm just saying, right? If that's what you're into. And then all of a sudden, all this cool shit will pop up. Pictures, images, videos, events, right? So all of a sudden, you can start thinking about that and putting that into your into your mind into your computer between your ears and stuff so for me depending on what's going on and how i'm feeling um a couple of the areas i like to do and i like to visualize about would be a vacation spot now what's really cool is i was never really into vacations until we rocked that europe trip last year and so that that made a switch for me being by the ocean the mediterranean um it really really triggered something in me that i didn't realize was that powerful so, you know, part of my plan in the next year or so is to get back to Europe somehow. I don't know how, you know, I don't know what trip, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know if it's going to be me, me and the wife and the family. I don't know. That's going to unfold, right? But that did something where I want to get there again. I want to spend more time there, right? So it's kind of cool and very different from the things I normally think about. So that's kind of refreshing as well, too. The other thing I like to do, one of my favorite things, is just retail storefronts, right? Look at different store designs and how, how different stores are, you know, are setting up displays and, and setting up the environment and how they make things feel and stuff like that. And not just, you know, supplement stores and equipment stores because that's kind of what we're into, but other retail stores and clothing stores because I get ideas from that. I get motivation from it. And it's one of the reasons why when I do my power walks, I like to walk in areas of town where all the little shops are because I get stimulus from that. I get ideas and it, it, it's part of the thing that I realized early on puts me into a motivated frame of mind or a peak state, right? To me, that's really important. Uh, or gyms. I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll go on Google and I'll just look at other gyms and stuff like that. And not to copy other gyms, but just to come up with ideas and 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 see things and look at things and go, oh, I never thought of doing it that way. Or that looks really sharp or wow, you know. And again, it motivates me so that when I walk into my facility, I want to make sure that I do it, you know, set things up so that 
I get that feeling when I walk in, that I like seeing what I see, and it's pleasing, and it's the environment I want. One of the things we're working on all the time is music. You know, the majority of my clientele is over 40. So for me, the music's important. The music's important when we walk in, there's 80s and 90s, because that's the area that we really got into music when we're 40 and 50 and, and even in our 60s and stuff. And I really want to create that environment because that's the clientele that, that interests me, that motivate me, that, that I want to be working with. So I want to set that environment up. If you walk into a facility and it's all the EDM stuff like that, what the kids are calling it today and stuff like that. Well, that's not really my stuff, but that's also not really what a lot of my clients are into. So, you know, if you walk into some of those clothing stores in the mall, sometimes they got all that crazy shit going on. But look around, who's shopping in that store at the time? It's not you and me. It's not the guys and girls that are listening to this podcast, right? If we're there, it's because we're the financier for our 15 or 17-year-olds, you know, that we're paying for what they're, they're grabbing and stuff like that. That's the only reason you'll see, I think, for the most part, people our age in that kind of situation overall. Um, so to me, it's, it, those are the things that I like to do. And that's, that, that visualization, that daydreaming with intent is another way that helps fuel me, put me in that peak state, get me excited, get me motivated, make me productive and move me towards improving what we're doing. And I like to be there. I like being a shopkeeper. I like having my retail spot. I like having a spot that people come to, to purchase goods and services. I really enjoyed it. I have since I was a kid. I remember on the farm, one of the coolest things I used to do is that we grew sweet corn and we sold corn by the side of the road. And I fucking loved it. That's where I knew early on, I was like 12, that I wanted to be in business. I just really enjoyed that. So I'll often put myself into that mode of thinking and, and daydreaming or visualization um, of those things because it fires me up. So what a great way to take me from a state of less than peak you know, uh, potential and turn around. It's almost like it, it, it allows me to think about why I got into some of the stuff in the first place. This is why I'm here because you like this aspect. And if I can do it while serving and helping people acquire the goals and, 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 and then the, you know, satisfying their needs that they want, then it's a win-win overall. One of my favorite exercises, and I recommend this to people all the time that are struggling with trying to figure out who they are, where they want to go, you know, what, what, what would make them truly happy? Because I think a lot of us get caught up into the day-to-day -day of what we're doing, and we realize that we're not happy. And we know we're not happy. We just don't know what we want to be doing. We have an idea, but we're not really sure because we haven't spent time in that space. We haven't given ourselves permission to think. We haven't given ourselves permission to visualize or daydream about it because we're maybe we're afraid to, or maybe we just haven't done it, or we feel we shouldn't. We have a lot of pressures. You know, I can't make a career change. I have a, I have a mortgage. I have, you know, a car payment. I have kids going off to school. There's no way I can entertain that. So we get caught now. We're, we're in a state of fear rather than a state of possibility. So one of my favorite exercises, uh, and I like to do it to myself every once in a while as well too, and then compare it. I call it creating the ultimate day. And what you do is you take a piece of paper, you go somewhere off where it's quiet and you can think about it. And then what you want to do is design your ultimate day from what time you get up to what you do next, what you do for breakfast, what you do during the day, where you go for lunch, how you have lunch, who you talk to, what you're doing right until the very moment that you go to bed. And you think about what would be the ultimate day? What would, if someone said, hey, you have one day left to live on this planet, it's tomorrow. That's another way to look at it. How would you spend it? That one's a little extreme because then you're like, oh, I haven't talked to this person, I haven't talked to in a while or whatever. That's okay. But how, what would an ultimate Tuesday be like for you? What would an ultimate Wednesday be like for you? And then, you know, Write down whatever comes to your mind. Just let it, let the gates open. Just write it out, write it out, write it out. And then come back to it and look at it and move things around. It is super powerful. It is really cool to see. And it'll get you excited. And then basically what you're doing is putting yourself in a position that you can reverse engineer your life to be what you want. 
so basically what you're doing is you're creating a plan, a worksheet. And then you look at it, say, you know, once you've done it and you've gone through the rough and, and spend some time on this and come back to it a few times until you truly just, it's the way you want. And, and how does it, you know, what are you hearing? What are the sounds you hear? What are the sights you see? What are the smells? What are, you know what I mean? Like get your senses involved. Sometimes it gets a little crazy and we, we put like a hundred things in that day because, oh, I don't want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. And then when we look at it, we realize, okay, well, that's not possible. So what would that day look like? Let's clean it up a little bit. Super, super cool. And then what I like to do is when I do it, as I have an, a, a file that I keep these in, and every once in a while I'll compare it. I'll compare what does my ultimate day now look like compared to when I wrote it a year ago and five years ago. And what are the similarities and what are changing? And what is changing? Some proper English here. A really, really cool exercise. And then once you have that, what's stopping you from creating that day? What's stopping you from having that day every day? It's a little scary. And the hard part is because we're not sure. We're not, we don't know how we would get there. What would that look like? But what we've created is a target. And in compared to the day you have normally, what's your normal day like? What does that feel like? What does that sound like? What does that smell like? What does that look like? And our goal is to get the two of them to get closer and closer together. I find some people when they do it, they get so caught up in it. They get so, you know, it's, it's almost like you get a high from it. And then once you have that, look at it again. And come back to it and then work it. And it's a work in progress, but some things will come to light that are very, very important and very, very powerful overall. And then at that point, take some action. You might not be able to create that in 30 days, but you can definitely move the needle. You might not be able to create that in a year, but you can definitely make some ground towards it. So if you decide, hey, you know what I really like to be doing is I'd like to be working in tourism in an island in the Mediterranean or in the, in the south or whatever and uh, working with people and doing that kind of stuff. Well, how do you do that? What would a living look like that? What would you have to do? Is that doable? You know, if you have eight-year-olds, you might not be able to do that, but you can work towards it. You can start putting the groundwork into it. You can start preparing for it. Hey, maybe if I do that, I should probably learn Spanish if I'm going to a country where, you know, there's a lot of Spanish there and I could be a translator for locals and tourists coming out. I don't know. I'm just making some shit up here. I'm just running with it. But at the end of the day, you might not be able to go there tomorrow, but you know what you can start tomorrow? You can start a Spanish class. You can start looking in to travel. Maybe it's a farm. Maybe it's whatever it is. But you won't know until you do this kind of thing. But again, guys, super powerful. And you know what? If you come up with that ultimate day and your current day is really far from it, that's telling you a lot as well. That's giving you a ton of information, right? And it's all about course correction. It's all about navigating. It's all about where am I at now? Where am I headed to? Course correct, course correct, behavior correct, right? What got you here won't get you there. So what is it I need to do? What do I have to get better at? Is it self-discipline? Is it finances? Right? Is it having conversations with key people? Whatever it is, it'll start to unfold in front of you. But then you have to take action on it. You have to do something with it. Because if you don't, no one's going to do it for you. And if you're not where you truly want to be right now, it's on you. You can blame circumstance. You can blame all the shit you want. But when you find people that are doing what they want to do and have created that lifestyle that they want and are doing the ultimate day for themselves... They weren't there overnight. They didn't wake up there magically. And if you have a chance to talk to them and ask them, they will tell you at one point they were where you were. They were in a position that was less than optimal for themselves. And they will tell you that they took action. They reflected. They took inventory. They spent time in their head. They did that hard work. And then they started taking action. They put a plan together and they started working that plan. And that plan will adjust. And that plan will have to be corrected. And that plan will have to be changed on the way up. But you don't get there until you start taking action. But you need to know where you're going. What is your passion? What is your vision? What is it that you want to do? What is your purpose? And once you know that, then you start working towards it. But again, 
And I think that's where a lot of people fall down. Two things. They have no clue because they haven't worked it. Or they start to and they realize, you know what? They have to do a lot of work on themselves to get there. And that is daunting. That can be stressful. That can be emotional. And it's hard fucking work. But that's the only way we're going to get it. The only way you're going to get to that day. And if you can work towards that, you know, the journey towards that is going to start changing you and those around you. And what you think your ultimate day and where you end up in a year from now could be radically different. You could surpass it. Or you might only be halfway there. But the difference is you'll have made changes. You'll have made progress. You'll have moved towards it. Which is far better than just sitting in the spot you are now. Pissed off. Unhappy. Unfulfilled. And time is ticking. That's the other thing, guys. That's that other pressure. Time is ticking. Once we get aware of something, once we know something about ourselves, then we become responsible for it. Little steps, small targets, move towards it. But this exercise, I'm telling you, if you do it and you do it in earnest and you do it on a regular basis and you get better at it, it'll be amazing. That's all I have to say for now on that, guys. Thank you very much. Head on over to iTunes. Leave us a five-star rating. A little review would be great. Head on over to Hostile Gear. Use the code SILVERBACK to save 20% off on some amazing daydreaming-type clothing that'll move you towards your visualizations. I'm trying really hard here. I'm going too hard. Guys, as always, though, work hard, motherfuckers, and I'll talk to you guys later.